Today we're doing a BIOS audit slash overview, and we're gonna start out with a great TurboGrafx CD RPG called Dragon Slayer. We're gonna load the core like normal, and we're gonna go into the RetroArch options, information, core information, and you're gonna see I have BIOS here. It's telling me I need to have System Card 3 to run games, but I additionally have System Card 2, 1, and Games Express. Even though they say they're optional, there's a reason to have them, and I'm going to give you a perfect example of this in a minute. But anyways, we're going to back up and load the game like normal. And this is using System Card 3 right now, which runs the vast majority of games, and TurboGrafx CD can be quite complicated with how many different revisions and releases of the system they've had in Japan and the United States, but System Card 3 runs most games. I ripped this game down to 16 megabytes and it still has quite a bit of digitized audio and it's pretty awesome. Again, this is Dragon Slayer. One of the great USA games too. I mean, there's a lot of Japanese only RPGs, but I'm trying to get as many of those converted as I can. Fine morning to you, my lord. Good morning, my lord. Ah, uh, my dear Prince Logan. I understand... Anyways, that's Dragon, Dragon Slayer, and uh, we're going to try to load a game that doesn't use System Card 3, so I can show you what happens. And this game's uh, crazy. It's called High League Fantasy, and it's basically Final Fantasy V Engine with an adult theme. It's sadomasochistic, it's ridiculous, it's absurd, but we're going to try to load it using System Card 3 and show you what happens. It's giving me an error because it does not run on System Card 3, but I'm going to go into RetroArch Options, Quick Menu, Options, and where it says CD BIOS, I'm going to change it to Games Express, which is what this game does run on. I have to exit back to the main GUI, then reload it to get into the new BIOS. And that's the new splash screen. Look, it even has a Final Fantasy V star style logo. But anyways, it takes a few minutes to get into the game, so I'm going to give you a save state just to give you a little emphasis on what style of game this is. We'll load the save state. As I said, this does have nudity, but some of the first enemies are pretty uh, dressed, so I could get away with showing this video with no problems. And as you see, music is present, even though this is a rip of the game, so there's quite a few games where there's still music present, which is cool. But we're going to go into the overworld, and we're going to try to initiate an, a battle with an enemy in the overworld. And look at that. And these enemies get progressively crazier. I mean, and they'll even change their animation. Like, this girl may go into a sexy pose. It gets ridiculous. But anyways, I'll show you the name of this game one more time if you want to try it out. I mean, it's basically Final Fantasy V Engine. It's quite a bit like Final Fantasy in every conceivable way. It was High League Fantasy, PC Engine... And we're going to do another BIOS audit on a few other systems before we quit this video. We're going to do an audit on Odyssey 2, just to see what we have here. Again, I'm going in uh, Information, Core Information, and it's showing for firmware. It's showing these are required. I have all present and accounted for. And unfortunately, only a few games even work on this emulator. Uh, O2 ROM Ben pretty much runs all three so these other ones even though I have them there they're not necessary at this point but in future updates of the emulator they may be pertinent but for now they're useless and we have PlayStation 1 
I'm going to do an audit on this as well. I have three BIOS for Japan, Europe, and USA. And they're all present, but they say they're optional. Just like with a PC Engine, there's cases where they may come in handy, but as of right now, we do not necessarily need them to run this core. Sega Saturn. Again, optional for the Saturn BIOS. It's there just in case. And we have a 3DO. Here it says it's required, so you do have to have this one. And these are case sensitive. If I would have a capital BIN, it would not function. But I made sure to have the right MD5 hash checks them as well. But this is good and accounted for. We have Atari 7800. Again, it says optional for the 7800 BIOS, so it'll run without the BIOS, but it's there in case. And all these BIOS I'm showing you are from my Master BIOS module, which I'll link to in this video description. Here we have a CPS2 game. And you'll see the splash screen for the CPS2 games by Capcom. It's usually a red screen. Right there. So that's a good and accounted for. We have Atari Lynx. It says optional Lynx boot image. We have it. And here's the big one. MSX was one of the more complicated ones to get going, but the BIOS are all present, and we're going to do an audit on these. And we need all five of these to be present for MSX 1 and 2, and they're all here. I've tested Metal Gear 1, 2, Vampire Killer, and multiple other games, and they've run fantastic. Then we have uh, two types of Neo Geo, Run, one that's an old set and one that's a new set. You use the old set for Neo Geo would be in main 2003 and Final Burn Alpha standard. But then there's a new set that runs in Final Burn Alpha 2012 and main 2010. And I'll give you a little overview of that in the last part of this video. But we're going to test out a Neo Geo game called Super Dodgeball using the old Neo Geo BIOS. And we're getting a normal boot up sequence for a Neo Geo. I really like the Nintendo version of Super Dodgeball. Technos Japan, the great company behind Double Dragon. The last thing I'm going to show you is a little trick with Game Boy Advance BIOS that many of you may not be aware of. We're going to use Outer Beast as a test example. We're going to load the core normally. Then we're going to go into RetroArch Options. One thing you may not be aware of is that many games do not run well with sound on Game Boy Advance emulators. But this is the way to fix that. We're going to go in a quick menu. Options. And it says use BIOS file if found. We're going to turn it on. Back out. And of course when you go to information we'll see if the BIOS are even present. Which they are if you use my master BIOS module. It says right there present but optional. In this case... They're good to use. There's a, a few RPGs and other games that come to mind that have had issues with sound skipping, etc. And using the true GBA BIOS as a load for firmware helps these exponentially. 
So we're going to actually exit to the main GUI just like I did with PC Engine. And we should get the logo bio screen when we load back into the game. Now we're officially using the BIOS and this will help you out with quite a few games. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is my BIOS module setup before we close out this video. If you go into modules, install extra modules, I have three versions of Master BIOS module there. This is the old Neo, and it'll work with MAME 2003 and Final Burn Alpha. Then I show the BIOS I have for other systems, such as 3DO, Atari 7800, Atari Lynx, CPS2, MSX1 and 2, Odyssey 2, PlayStation 1, Sega 32X, Sega 30, Sega CD, sorry, TurboGrafx CD PC Engine. Now, you could only have old or new installed. You cannot have both at the same time. That's why I did an additional thing. I made it where... You have a non-Neo Geo set where you can install it and have all the BIOS for the other systems except for Neo Geo. So if you want to...